Well, good evening, folks, and welcome to tonight's magic show, uh, continuing in our saga of uh, trainings for our clients. Uh, this is something that uh, we do on a regular basis, and uh, it's uh, something that we record. So without too much further ado, we're going to get right to it. Uh, good evening, Bill. Nice to have you with us, sir, from the People's Republic of Minnesota, if I remember correctly. <laughs> So tonight's topic, you guys, is how the New York Yankees would run a chiropractic office uh, or a practice, right? And it's <clears throat> it's a, a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek. I mean, we could have used any professional sports team here for this uh, analogy because there's a big difference between how most businesses, particularly small businesses, uh, run and how a major league sporting uh, franchise would. I mean, we could have used any of the NFL teams, NBA teams, NHL teams, or otherwise. But there's a secret piece here that is going to uh, make a difference for those that are, uh, you know, able to connect with what it is that we want you to gather tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know much about Full Circle, we focus on three main things, adding more meaning to people's lives while they make the amount of money that they want to make and have the freedom that they want to have. And we've got a three-leveled uh, roadmap that I developed uh, many years ago. And this first level we call the clarity level, which is really about finding more meaning in your life. Uh, the manifestation level is where most people crank it up and start to make the most amounts of money. And in the legacy level, this is where people are really looking at how they get the most freedom in their life. Said another way, I would say the clarity level is also about becoming the most uh, masterful practitioner of your art that you could become. The manifestation level is become, about becoming a great business owner because you can be a great practitioner and not be necessarily a great business owner. And finally, the legacy level is about where you're becoming a great entrepreneur and you're looking at multiple streams of income and other things. Uh, tonight's conversation comes to us uh, from the vision category um, and uh, sorry, vision focus systems team are our categories. I apologize. And it's underneath the team category where we're going to really be talking about uh, how to develop the most uh, comprehensive team you can. Um, we've shown the roadmap another way. Some people like this system a little bit better, where it actually looks like waypoints on a, on a roadmap. And uh, if that's the case, looking at the manifestation level, we're actually teaching from the manifestation level tonight, where we're talking about uh, team and particularly how we're going to have long term backup team members. Okay. Um, so, without too much further ado, Let's do this conversation tonight, you guys, okay? So as I travel and speak uh, around uh, the world uh, to chiropractic audiences, both virtually and, uh, and, and, and live, now that we're back after the, the world is righted on its axis again, one of the things we hear a lot about is this frustration that a lot of docs have, which is all about literally team members and how team members just seem to come and how team members seem to, you know, go, right? There doesn't seem to be a... a uh, holding pattern to most team members, particularly in a, in a chiropractic office. Uh, I've heard some stats, nothing official, that says that, you know, your average team member stays with them for about two years, right? And so it's like team come, teams go, and, you know, you end up getting um, used to somebody and you build the, the audience and you build the, they get used to the culture, they get used to the structure, and, you know, and then they're gone. And that is unbelievably uh, frustrating. One of the worst stories I ever heard, I was speaking in, in in uh, Philly actually years ago for uh, my good friend, Dr. Guy Reekman. And there was a, a doc there, we were doing some teamwork and there was a doc there who said, you know what, let me tell you my, my latest team story. And he had just recruited, well, actually, sorry, he hadn't recruited, he had hired a new team member <clears throat> that happened to be a lady who was at the front desk. Uh, he didn't know much about recruiting. He knew nothing about recruiting actually, which again, just for the record, um, we're big fans of recruiting. We don't hire, we don't believe in hiring. We think it's a bad choice. But anyways, he hired, um, very little training, puts the poor person at the front desk, and uh, <laughs> he comes out midway through his morning shift, and in this chiropractic office, this lady is out there handing out Tylenol out of her purse to the patients in the front office, right? And it's like, oh my God, okay, that's about as bad as it gets. She went very quickly, quite frankly, right? So, uh, you know, team members come and they go, and that's, that's, that's one of the things about business. Um, I've often said that my greatest joy in life is people, my greatest frustration in life is people <laughs> uh, from a business perspective, from a human resources perspective, right? So team members come and they go and it's frustrating. I also hear docs tell me all the time that team members are hard to find, 
right? Literally to have a, a proper process laid out where, again, you're recruiting, please, if you take nothing else from tonight's conversation, recruit, recruit, never hire, right? But I definitely hear docs say all the time that they're hard to find, they don't know where to look, they don't know what to do, they don't have a process, it's a little bit, uh, you know, trial by fire and, uh, you know, good help is hard to find. Well, that's definitely if you don't know for sure what you're doing and you don't have a structure to it and you're not doing, you're running your office the way, you know, in this example, the New York Yankees would, of course you're having trouble with that, right? So definitely um, some truth to the frustrations that, that uh, people are finding. The other thing I hear all the time is it just takes too much time, energy, and money, Tom, to really just go through this whole you know, process with, uh, with, with human resources. Matter of fact, I've had a couple of clients that said, you know what, Tom, I'm so pissed off at the whole thing, I just gave up. Literally, I'm just running my office by myself. Um, and if that's their highest value and it's working for them, I mean, God bless them. I would offer this, though. It's very difficult to be efficient and effective and, and therefore be fulfilled in practice, make a big difference on your community and make a decent living if you're answering the phone, taking people to the rooms, doing all the diagnosis, doing all the adjusting, doing all the therapy if you're into that stuff, uh, you know, taking the money. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a very inefficient way to do it, right? So, you know, you gotta be really looking at how to leverage your time, your energy and money to get the maximum, you know, bang for your buck. And this is something, again, that major league sporting franchises do really, really well. And it's something that has not been adopted in business yet. And I am here to, you know, raise the alarms, wave the flags to try and get folks that are, uh, you know, forward thinking to start to take on some of the components that these major league sports franchises have learned through decades and decades, if not centuries of, of living. Because here's the, the bottom line, you guys. You take all of that and you end up with a revolving door. That's really the fear that most docs have, right? We're going to just have this revolving door and it doesn't matter what I do. They're here, they're gone. I just talked to one of my dearest friends uh, two nights ago uh, in chiropractic uh, in the Toronto area, actually, who said, you know what? Um, I've had a little bit of a challenge with uh, team members lately, Tom. And I said, oh, oh, really? Tell me about it. He goes, well, yeah. Um, one of them's away on mat leave, his, his main uh, uh, assistant. And then the secondary one announced that she wanted to take July and August off. And he goes, well, I, I'm sorry. I just can't accommodate that. We're not shutting the office down. And then Jack, she, she went back to think of it. She goes, well, actually, I want June, July and August off. And he's like, no. And she goes, well, then I quit. And he goes, well, then I guess you quit. So since then, which was... In, uh, I guess late May, early June, he's had four different team members. This is as of this recording, you guys, it's only August, right? It's mid August. So, in the last two and a half months, he's had literally a revolving door of team members coming and going through his practice. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. That's not good for business. <laughs> it's not good for mindset. It's not good because half the time you're bringing some of that crap home with you as well. And uh, it's not good for the family dynamic of the. All right. So again, there is a solution. I'm going to share it with you tonight. I feel like I should have a drum roll at some point. Bill, maybe you could give me a drum roll, Bill. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, here it is. There it is. Thank you, Bill. That's great. Perfect. Perfect. Because um, really what it is that we all want, you guys, right, is we want a strong, stable team. I uh, evaluated a uh, uh, cover to practice a couple of years ago that the uh, one of the keys to this business was they had a really, it's a big business, but they had a very, very, very strong team. And one of the reasons they did is because they had a an office manager who'd been in the practice for 27 years. And that energy, right, stabilized the entire rest of the team. There was uh, front desk team members have been there. One had been there 14 years. One had been there nine years, right? So there was this really strong, stable team. And that practice, I've evaluated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of government practice around the world in the last uh, 15 years as of this recording. And I can tell you that that was one of the highest valued appraisals any practice had ever done because one of not the only but one of the reasons because it had a strong stable team because that just rippled out into strong not stable right, I don't repeatable experiences for practice members which when you have repeatable experiences in a business you guys you get trust and if you look at the very old classic sales cycle people have to know you they have to like you and they have to trust you and if you can create a strong, stable team, then that's going to really massively increase that trust factor right off the bat. And with a high trust factor, people are going to stay, they're going to pay, and they're going to refer their friends and family, right? So everybody, if they, 
you haven't thought about having a strong stable team, uh, wink, wink, you should be thinking about it. I would also suggest that really what you want to be looking for, you guys, is to be able to hand pick the winners, right? Um, I can tell you that I've seen practices where, again, they've had these sort of group interview st structures, and which, which work quite well, actually. We've got an entire protocol in our coaching program for that, uh, where it allows you to go in and handpick the really like the cream of the crop kind of a thing, right? And that's really what I think is the best case scenario. When you're recruiting, you are literally you know, separating from the old uh, farmer sayings, I grew up on a farm, you're separating the chafe from the wheat and you're going to be able to handpick the really the best of the best, right? And that's really what you should be focusing on. That's what should be one of your aspirations, so to speak, right? And then of course, ideally, you're going to end up with an easy, effective and reproducible, let me say that word again, reproducible recruiting process. Because again, please never hire only ever recruit. There's a distinction here, right? When you're recruiting, you're you're getting very clear, doing your due diligence on exactly who you want, why you want them. You're doing your psychographic, your demographic analysis, some of the pieces we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, and you're literally handpicking the best of the best, right? But you want it to be easy and effective and reducible so that you can put it on your hard drive file and you can pull it out again if, in fact, you ever need to. And again, it's not just about replacing team members, you guys. Uh, there's a strategy that we're talking about here tonight that the Yankees know all about, um, as do you know every other major sporting uh, league franchise in the world. That uh, is uh, uh, something we're going to share. Because ideally, what you want to have, you guys, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag, is you want, in a business, you want to have your starters and you want to have a bench. OK, this is whatever major league sporting team I use the New York Yankees because people seem to know the pinstripes these days. But um, every major league sporting team, NBA, NHL, you know, NFL, CFL in the Canadian world, any of it has a bench. You have your starters and you have your bench. And I'll, we'll go through why the psychology of that and actually how to go about creating that. OK, so uh, Dr. Jonathan Price, one of our uh it's from Portland, Oregon. Jonathan, before he understood this concept and actually applied it, there was a lot of weak links on the team. And as a result of that, the business wasn't as stable as it could have been um, because he didn't have a strong, stable team, as I already had mentioned. It was a confusing process. Uh, actually, he was hiring, not recruiting. We put a recruiting process together and helped him build a bench. It all of a sudden changed a lot of things because it was really hit and miss about finding the team member. After developing this bench concept and implementing and the way I'm going to teach you tonight, he had a strong, stable team. The business skyrocketed, okay? He wrote us one of the greatest case study testimonials, you guys. Um, while being in his practice 50% less, his already multiple big six-figure practice had a 250% increase in profitability, and he was there only half as often. I don't know about you, but that's kind of appealing, you know? And part of it, one of, one of the many, many, many strategies we implemented in the business was this bench Concept that I'm sharing with you guys tonight. And it did create an easy reproducible process that led to really consistent recruiting. So how is it you go about building a bench? Which, by the way, does anybody have a bench? Just, I'd love to see that in the chat. Does anybody have a bench? Just a yes or a no in the chat would be great, you guys, while I just take a deep breath and a sip of water. Anybody have a bench? Yes or no? Uh, let's see, fingers to keyboards, we see a no, a no, several no's, not seeing anybody that's really em embraced this concept yet. Well, that's okay, because we are going to, I am going to do my best to enroll every one of you watching this recording and, uh, in fact, on here live tonight to, uh, to get, get engaged in this process, all right? So there's five keys to this, and we're going to go through this uh, in order, you guys, but just to give you a real quick overview. We're going to be talking about outcomes assessments. We're going to be talking about picking an avatar. We're going to be talking about how you always need to have your radar on and how to reach out. And finally, the final step is actually building and maintaining a bench. Okay, so those are the five steps. Uh, if you're a note taker, which I always am when I'm in these kind of events, uh, I promise you we'll, we'll uh, give you time to do that because we're going to go through them kind of one at a time here. Okay. So the first step you want to do, you guys, is create an outcomes assessment for whatever the role is that you have. And I advocate that you have an outcomes assessment for every role on your team. 
So if you have in a chiropractic office, if you've got a, a like a front desk admin person, there should be an outcomes assessment for that. If you have an office manager, there should be a separate, probably related, but a separate outcomes assessment for that. If you have a tech CA, if you've got associates, if you've got bookkeepers, if you've got whoever is part of your team, there should be an outcomes assessment. And let's get clear what an outcomes assessment is and what its purpose is. An outcomes assessment defines the outcomes that the team member needs to achieve in order to be great at their role. Okay, I have found in my travels and my consulting career now as of this recording almost 27 years, that there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are not great at educating and telling their team members how to be great at their role, how to be great at their job. I offer you guys that there is an inherent desire within each all human beings to do a good job. But as bosses, we're and shitty and not telling them how to be good at their job, right? So by creating an outcomes assessment, not just what responsibilities they need to, to fulfill them, but what outcomes need to be achieved. Now, our general rule of thumb with, with outcomes, you guys, is adopt the training manuals or whatever uh, um, uh, um, ways, SOPs, or whatever it is you've got that sort of helps them get to a point where they're somewhat competent to create the outcome. There needs to be some training associated with them. And actually, as they've laid out in other trainings and different conversations I've had, uh, on these times of, of conversations and trainings, we've talked to you how an outcomes assessment could be used as a training guideline tool, right? But short term, what's beautiful about outcomes assessment, it makes it crystal clear about what needs to occur, what outcome needs to occur in order for this person to be great at the role so that they're clear about how to do it. It makes management and performance reviews so much easier because you know and they know inherently doing a lot of research that they're either achieving the outcome or they're not. If they're not achieving the outcome, why aren't they? Is it because of poor training, which probably falls back on you or whoever trained them? Or is it because they're a little bit incompetent? Uh, they're not motivated or they just don't have the capabilities or whatever, but it brings up discussion and possibilities to solve problems before they become you know, a bigger issue, okay? So outcomes assessments for every role in the team. And of course, in our programs, we have multiple outcomes assessment <laughs> templates for every different role that's available in a healthcare office in today's world, okay? So step one, outcomes assessment, so that you know exactly what outcomes need to be achieved in order for the person to be great at the role so that you know why, with clarity, you're actually bringing them onto the team. Because if, if, if there's nothing to achieve, there's no outcomes to achieve, because why would you, why would you bring them on the team? It's kind, of, it's kind of crazy, actually, right? Okay, step two, avatar. This is based upon that, you know, that, that great movie, uh, of a similar name here, right? Um, where you're literally designing the psychographic and demographic profile of the person that you want to bring onto the squad, okay, onto the team. Um, and again, the clearer you are with the more detail you have, the easier it's gonna be to build your bench. Create the strong, stable team that you desire, right? That are completely handpicked, that are likely to be with you for a long time, if not forever, and it becomes a reproducible process. So I've talked at depth on other recordings about avatars, but uh, the simple skinny note is it's a must. You, you, the more detail, the better. And again, here's the way I described this. I already said it, but let me say it again because people miss this because it's simple but powerful because you will recognize them when you cross their path. And that's incredibly important uh, you know, for the concept of bench building because Step number three is you got to have your radar on at all times, right? When does bench building begin? It begins the day you start your practice, you start your business. When does it end? The day you're pushing up daisies in the marble orchard, okay, or you, or you retire. You should always have your radar screen, you know, scanning the environment for talent. Right, particularly you're looking for great talent that, and you know, if, if again using chiropractic as the as the uh, uh, main uh, example here, it's a service-based industry. So if you recognize service when you're at Home Depot, when you're at uh, you know a local restaurant or whatever, right? Whenever you see talent, you should be recognizing that because you know what outcomes need to be achieved. You're committed to building a bench, not just having starters, and we'll show you why it's important to have a bench. It's not transparent enough as it is. There's three really important reasons for that. And you're always going to have your radar on. So you'll just recognize them when they come. And I've told the story before, but it bears repeating, you guys, right? 
that and well, actually it'll tie into this point where you reach out to the people when you recognize talent, when you recognize someone that crosses your path, that is a great potential candidate for your bench, you reach out. So I'll tell the story, I've told it many times before, I'll try and do the Reader's Digest version, but this is where I was, um, the family and I were ordering some food, I think it was from a local roadhouse, and the young lady on the phone was exemplary, and she was awesome, her customer service was off the hook, and um, we, I ordered the food, you know, or later, whatever it is, I went down to pick up the food. And it just so happened that I had voice recognition when I walked into the restaurant, I was interacting with the same human that I was on the phone, so I recognized her. And, uh, you know, so I connected with her and stuff. And I said, but you're the young lady I was talking to that took the order. She goes, yes, you know, I was Dr. Preston, it was great, blah, blah, blah. So we're chatting it up a little bit. And so this is part of the reach out, you guys, right? Get out of your comfort zone if you're a little bit of an introvert and just have a conversation with another human being, right? And in this case, I just said to her, I said, you know, hey, um, you know what, I, I really appreciate the great service that you're giving me. I said, you were great on the phone, you're great here today when I'm picking up the food. And she's a young lady in her 20s somewhere, and she's kind of like, oh, well, man, she's kind of blushed a little bit. She goes, that's great, thanks, I really appreciate that. And I said, you know, is this your life's calling? I'm just curious, is this, is this like working here? Is this, is this your life's calling? And she's like, oh, God, no, <laughs> no, 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 it's not my life's calling, because this is like a transition spot between things. And I said, have you ever considered a career in healthcare? And she's like, no, why? I said, well, I'm a doctor. I'm in the lo local uh, doctor in the area. I said, my office isn't very far from here. I said, um, and I'm always looking for, you know, people that I think have exemplary skills in the service uh, thing. And I said, you've got exemplary skills. I said, would you ever consider a career in, you know, in healthcare? And she's like, God, I never really thought about it, but I don't see why not. And I said, well, you know, could I have a conversation with you? Could I buy a cup of coffee, buy a lunch, and just tell you about our office and our mission and what we're about? It's as simple as that, you guys, right? It doesn't have to be some complex thing. Now, what if she would have said, yeah, no, this is my life's calling. I'd say, a girl, high five, good for you. There's very few of us on the planet that actually know what our life's calling is and are actually living it, right? That would have ended that conversation. If I'd said to her, you know, you ever considered a career in healthcare? And she goes, yeah, and I'm not interested. Great, let me take my food and I'll be on my way, right? It's such a simple way to reach out, you guys, to just know that there's another human being out there, have a conversation, explore it and see. And as some probably know that story, right? I did end up having lunch with her. I'd seated the team that, you know, I'd hopefully be coming back to the office with her to meet the team. The team kind of did a little bit of an interview, had a thing, it was thumbs up all the way around. And she went on to our bench, okay? She was not a starter. I didn't need any starters. I had great starters. I had amazing team members, but we were building the bench so that, well, and I'll show you the, the uh, reasons why here in just a second, but we're building that bench. Here's the rule of thumb, you guys. You should have at least as many people on your bench as you have people in position. So if you've got two front desk staff, you should have at least two people on the bench, at least two people on the bench. I most commonly had six to eight people on the bench, even though I only had two front desk staff members. I had six to eight people on the bench for the front desk at all times. And even though I didn't have an office manager, didn't need one, I didn't feel at that particular phase of my career when I started building my bench years ago. Um, I had usually three four people on my uh, office manager uh, role as well, on my, on my bench as well for office managers. Now, did I hire them all? No, I didn't hire them all. But I had them on my bench because they were vetted, they had been interviewed, they saw the value in our mission and supporting it. We saw the value in them and they were ready to go at any given time. So when I wanted to expand or when I needed to replace, you know, they were there. Okay. So hopefully you guys got the, uh, the little uh, spreadsheet that went with this or the worksheet rather that went with this. So let me just go back and open that up. And uh, in all transparency, I really love to work off my iPad on notability so I can draw things with you guys, but uh, I uh, came out of the Wilderness Lodge uh, with, my, uh, with my wife the other day and I completely forgot my iPad. So here's the three reasons, you guys, three main reasons why you wanna have a bench, okay? Number one is to support your starters, right? And this is really, if you look at the major league uh, baseball team, use the example of the Yankees or a major league hockey team or whatever, starters are the front line. They're the people that are showing the most capabilities, the most aptitude, the most skill sets relative to you know, getting the job done in, in, in sport, in business and whatever, right? But they need support because they have downtimes and maybe they need to you know, take a little break or maybe they take in some much needed recreation time or maybe heaven forbid they get hurt. Well, when you've got 
um, a bench that to, can support those starters, it actually psychologically gives the starters a little bit of a, a deep breath because they care, they give a crap, they want to do a great job, but there's that pressure to always perform. So when you've got a bench, you can always support them, okay? It also, you guys, uh, uh, the kind of tied to that is it motivates the starters because they also know that there's somebody right there that would love to be a starter, that would love to be, you know, on the front lines in the work. And so it also encourages them to bring their A-game on a daily basis. And the last part is, and I briefly almost uh, implied this when I talked about injuries or something, but it can also, it's easier to replace people. Because again, as I said earlier, the frustrations I hear from docs all the time, people are frustrated because it takes a lot of time, energy, and money. It seems to be hard. Where do you find them? All this stuff. Well, when the, the next person you're going to bring on to, you know, the team to do the role of whatever the role is in your different, in your office, uh, when it's as simple as going to your desk drawer and pulling out the name of the bench people that you have, it's a whole lot easier, you guys, to replace somebody that absolutely needs to be replaced for whatever reason. So those are the three reasons that I feel building a bench is an absolute priority in, uh, in today's world. All right. Uh, listen, does anybody have any questions before we get uh, too much farther down the hole here? I'd be very open to questions if there's anybody in the chat that would like to uh, ask a question at this moment in time. Or because, you know, it's a, if you're in a quiet background, feel free to come off your uh, mute and just ask your question. If you think you could ask your question more efficiently, then you could uh, type <laughs> while I get a sip of water. All right, if questions come in, we'll definitely uh, answer them, okay? So here's my um, recommendations, the coach in me, you guys. What are your action steps from this? Right. What is your one action step from this and what is your deadline for that? So I would love to see, you know, what uh, questions you guys have. Oh, there's a question from Dan. How do you make it clear to the person you're recruiting that there is not a position position right now? Dan, is that the question? Yeah. Well, this is how I language it, you guys um, say, uh, hey, Dan, you know what? Um, I think that you would be a great fit for my office. I really do. I think it would be fantastic. I just don't have an opening right now. But with your permission, what I'd like to do is I'd like to keep your resume on file. So the very next time I'm either expanding or replacing or in need of somebody, you would be one of the first people I call. Is that okay with you? Right? I can tell you guys that language uh, has worked every time. I have never had anybody tell me go get stuffed. You've wasted my time. Please don't keep my resume on file. It's just never been my experience, right? Um, I've had a couple of people tell me, you know, different things like, well, it feels like a kind of an integrity thing, Tom, you know, because um, because it's like, um, you know, you're, you're, it's like a false front thing. You're, 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 but again, let's be clear. I'm recruiting a bench. I'm not recruiting a starter. My intention is clear from the get-go, right? Uh, there's another question here. Um, hey, Doc, how tell your existing team that there is a bench well i can tell you for me i just tell them <laughs> and i tell them why I'm, bu I'm building a bench because uh what we're about is fulfillment of our mission right they're an important part of that but heaven forbid something happens they get hurt they get down they get sick uh they need some time off they're they have aging parents they're one of their kids gets sick they need to take some time off it takes that pressure off of them as a team member to do that i have Never had anything but full support from any team I've run in the over 30 plus years that I've run businesses the, about starting a bench. Never had anybody uh, think negatively of it uh, in my experience. Great question, by the way. Uh, if you got any other questions, you guys, please keep them coming. I would love to see at the risk of acting like a coach, right? What is your one action step? What is your main first takeaway? Your first takeaway action step from tonight's training and what's your Deadline. Just throw it in the chat, you guys. I'd love you to see what your first action step is and what your deadline is. Because as my great mentor, John Dimartini, taught me years ago, that a goal without a deadline is just a wish. It's not a goal at all, right? So I'd love to see just what you guys are taking away from this and what your first steps are. Just your first step, your very, very first step. Let's see what the fingers to the keyboard are going to say as, uh, as people just chime in here. 
as we bring this training in for a ending tonight. Uh, I happen to have an extra few minutes after the training tonight. So if somebody has any really specific questions about their specific office, happy to stay around for a bit and answer any questions. So let's just see, what is your first action step? I'm waiting for Bill, uh, waiting for Dan, waiting for Ruth, with Dr. Yanni. Let's see who's got action steps from tonight's training. Dr. Peters here, Mary, Mary and Phil are here. Who's got the quickest fingers? Oh my goodness. Seems like folks are uh, a little wee bit, tiny bit sluggish tonight. Bill says, keep the radar on. Find things would be a good fit. Perfect, Bill, I think that's a great piece, right? Um, let's just see. We're gonna, Dan and Robin are gonna update their outcomes assessments, right? Uh, to be positive, we're currently recruiting for. It's 90% there now. Nice job, 90%, you guys, that's awesome, right? Um, Dr. Yanni's gonna post, uh, hire more team members. Slight change in language, any recruit, don't hire, please recruit, recruit. Uh, slight change in language, but words have meaning, right? So it seems like there's some good action steps here, you guys, which is great. I'm happy to see that. Please, 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 please put deadlines on those action steps. Please do yourself a massive favor and put deadlines on those action steps because if you don't have a date to complete the above, the probability of it ever happening is very small. <laughs> it could actually be a complete donut, okay? All right, well, as we bring this in for landing, you guys, uh, those of you that are here on a regular basis, live, so many people watch this on recordings, but our next magic show uh, is in a couple of weeks as of this recording, September 1st. And it's literally, I'm gonna be sharing a, a secret formula. And I wanna sound a little bit mystical, cryptic about this, but a secret formula that absolutely builds wealth that every wealthy person I've ever met knows and has access to this secret formula, okay? So uh, uh, if you're interested, we'd love to have you. I'm sure if you're on our list, if you're here tonight, you're probably on our list. You'll be getting some information about that. And uh, it's an awesome opportunity to, uh, to share that with other people. That is also part of our roadmap. All of these trainings are part of our roadmap system that literally guides people through clarity manifestation legacy phases of our systems. And it's very specifically as part of the vision formula, particularly in the manifestation level right in here. It's called the manifestation formula. So uh, a couple of comments in the, um, in the chat as well. Ruth is gonna discuss outcomes assessments with your office recruiter, that's awesome. And Dan has got a deadline already for his action step. He's gonna have it out by the end of the weekend. So uh, those are the pieces that I wanted to get through tonight, you guys. So uh, I'm very happy to hang out for a few minutes and answer any specific questions that you may have as a result of the training, but what my strongest desire